Okay, you're ready to go. Enviable one. 
It could be argued that because Anne was so easily dissuaded from marrying Wentworth, that her love had been fickle and fleeting. It could not have been a true and enduring love at all. However, Austen's quick to assert that the breaking of the engagement was not, as she quotes, a merely selfish caution. Had she not imagined herself consulting his good, even more than her own, she could hardly have given him Wentworth up. Um, Mrs. Smith is another example of a woman who married for both love and money, but she is unfortunately widowed when Anne meets her again. It, uh, Austin states, she had been very fond of her husband, she had buried him, she had been used to affluence, it had gone. As a result of her lack of husband and money, she has no social ties other than her landlady and nurse, and she lives in simple lodgings. Her role and importance in society is non-existent, a huge deterioration from when she had been married. Mrs Smith's situation is an example of how a loving and wealthy marriage does not necessarily offer a woman perpetual stability. The future, especially for a woman, is unpredictable. Um, first quote is by Sarah Lewis from Women's Mission again. Um, the idealities of love, like all other idealities, are fast as prey beneath the leading mantle of exped expediency. Um, I think that Austen demonstrates this in the no in the novel, and I think she tries to portray it and both reject it as a good, good thing. Um, they both state that women should not be guided or forced to act purely on material motivations, and love is very important in securing a happy future. Anne Wentworth's union is only accepted by society once he is wealthy. <coughs> um, however, Austen dismiss, dismisses Wentworth's wealth as simply a bonus in their relationship. The love of is vital. Austen does, however, believe Anne's first rejection of Wentworth to be prudent, because it allowed her to be sure of her affection and judgment of his character to be correct. She states, they returned again into the past, more exquisitely happy, perhaps in their reunion than when it had first been rejected, more tender, more tried, more fixed in a knowledge of each other's character, more equal to act, more justified in acting. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that, 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 was, that was very interesting. Can we talk about you, you, your position on what Austin thought about the the, the marriage? The, the, the money was not was secondary or not important? Um, or, or I think well, it was important yeah. to their happiness, obviously, in marriage life. Um, but I think I think I think the love was definitely. I think that she was saying that it's ideal to have both, but. I, um, love is probably more important, and it it does it it lasts longer. It's probably more persistent than money, as seen in when Mrs. Smith. Are there characters in 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 Austin who marry for love to people who many don't have money? Because you know, you think about Mr. Darcy and uh, Knightley and so on. They're, yeah. they're, they're, they're prosperous and upper class in one case. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but. She does, I think she highlights the romantic aspect more. I mean, I think to the individual, such as like Elizabeth and um, in here, Anne, and to the um, partners, it's, it's more important that the love to them is more important. But maybe to the society and the family of the, of the, of the characters, um, she, she does make it seem that to them it uh, like advantageous matches. It's more important. Okay.